Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about microbial corrosion. So we've talked in the last few geobiology videos about microbial weathering. And in the first video, we talked about mineral dissolution, mineral surface reactivity, microbial colonization and organic reactions, silicate weathering, carbonate weathering, soil formation, and how weathering affects global climate. So if you want to go check that video out, I'll link it up here. We also talked in the previous microbial weathering video, the part two video, we talked about how sulfide becomes oxidized and how we can use these processes for bio leaching and bio mining. And we're talking today in this video about microbial corrosion, specifically by chemolithoautotrophs, chemoheterotrophs, and fungi. And don't be scared by those big words. Those are just different types of bacteria. And it's the only real way we can like group them in a systematic way. So it's not like you really have to know what that means. But if you're curious and want to know what those big words mean, you can check out my metabolic diversity video. I talk about what chemo versus photo means, what litho versus organo means, and what hetero versus auto means. But for this video, you just need to know that the first one in green is a type of bacteria. And the second one in blue is another group type of bacteria and the fungi are fungi. <laughs> so before we get into those three types of microorganisms that affect corrosion and contribute to it, let's talk a little bit about what corrosion is first of all. Corrosion is the degradation of a metal by electrochemical reactions between the metal and substances in its environment. Commonly corroded metals include things like iron, copper, aluminum, lead, and silver. However, in this video, we're going to be focusing on the most commonly corroded or rusted thing that we can think of, and that is steel, which is iron with an oxidation state of zero. Again, you don't really need to know that that's iron zero, but if you watched the previous video, over microbial weathering. We talked about iron two and three. Well, those forms of iron are not present in steel. It's actually a further reduced form of iron, which has an oxidation state of zero. So it's very reduced, which is why it's very susceptible to oxidation and rust. We talked in the previous video again about how rusting is the oxidation of iron or other reduced metals. And the thing that causes the oxidation and rusting of the iron in steel is oxygen. So oxygen exposure can eventually cause rusting because the oxygen is an oxidant. I feel like I'm saying ox a lot now, um, but the oxygen is an oxidant uh, for iron because it takes electrons away from the iron, making it become more oxidized. And that's because, you know, the more electrons you have, the more negatively charged you are, the more reduced you are. So because the oxygen is coming and accepting some electrons from the iron, it takes those away and then the iron becomes less negative and more oxidized. And so oxygen or just air exposure can cause the oxidation of iron and therefore rusting eventually. But that is not the only thing that can contribute to steel or iron corrosion. Actually, protons can also contribute to accepting electrons and oxidizing the iron and steel. And this is actually the primary method of iron or steel oxidation in anaerobic environments. That's because in anaerobic conditions, there's no oxygen. So because there's no oxygen, protons become the primary electron acceptors to oxidize the iron and steel. And because of this, they transform into hydrogen too, because they accept those electrons and they become reduced. And so they form hydrogen two compounds, which then can form a protective layer around the steel, which can prevent actually a further corrosion. But now getting into the microbial part of this, like the topic of this video is, the microbes that are present in that environment could actually facilitate the corrosion by eating away at any protective layers that form. And that is because some microbes can use H2 or these hydrogen compounds to gain energy. And so they do this, they take the hydrogen and they use it in their metabolic process. Many anaerobic microbes do this because they don't have oxygen. So they use the hydrogen instead. And then they eat away that protective layer, continually exposing the fresh steel surfaces underneath, which leads to more oxidation and corrosion of the metal. But microbes can contribute to corrosion, not only indirectly by just taking away this protective layer or 
producing byproducts of their metabolism that can be corrosive, but also directly in two major ways. They can either directly corrode material by enzymatic reactions. So microbial enzymes that they employ can directly corrode material, but they can also corrode through production of biofilms or EPS, which facilitate electron flow from the metal surface to the microbe, which can help it gain energy and its processes. But this facilitation of electron flow obviously contributes to those redox reactions in which the metal is becoming oxidized and the EPS, which is taking those electrons, accepting those electrons, acting as some sort of electron shuttle, is shuttling those electrons to the cell or the compound that the cell is employing to gain those electrons or convert a compound into something for its metabolism. So this is ways that microbes can directly contribute to steel or metal corrosion by either enzymatic or EPS reactions. And reminder, if you haven't seen the previous microbial weathering and geobio videos, EPS is extracellular polymeric substances. And this is just kind of mucousy material the bacteria produce that help them to either immobilize metals in their environment that are toxic to them that they don't want to take up or to fix them to a mineral surface that they want to continue to munch on or to create a micro environment that is favorable for their growth, which sometimes microbial colonies do this in a more colony uh, way in which it becomes a biofilm eventually, the EPS, because it gets huge and there's microbial communities all in it. And it's this film of EPS that cells are within and living in because it's at this micro environment now, because there are certain things that EPS can attract because it has a charge like uh, metal cations, like iron cations, for example, from steel that it can attract. And then these cells can then use and kind of store uh, as backup in their EPS until they need to use them again, because obviously iron is not only necessary for us to live, but also all other organisms. And so things need iron and that's why they're very efficient at corroding things that contain iron, such as steel. And there are a lot of other purposes of EPS, but that's just to name a few. And now moving to chemolithoautotrophs. So this previous little introduction here to microbial corrosion was to talk about what is corrosion? How do microbes contribute? Is it direct, indirect? And it turns out it depends, it can be both. And now let's get to those three major groups of types of microorganisms that can contribute to corrosion and how they do so. The first type or group of microorganism that contributes to corrosion is chemolithoautotrophs. Again, don't worry about the lung name there and what it means. Basically, these types of bacteria include bacteria that like to oxidize sulfur, nitrogen, iron. <laughs> I just realized that that also says nitrogen. Hold, please. Okay, there we go. So these bacteria include those that oxidize compounds like sulfur, nitrogen, iron, and manganese compounds. So these types of bacteria contribute to corrosion by, for example, those that oxidize sulfur and nitrogen compounds form sulfate and nitrate respectively. And then because that sulfate and nitrate becomes converted into sulfuric and nitric acid, that contributes then to the corrosion of metals because acid is corrosive. The other two types of bacteria listed here, like iron and manganese oxidizing bacteria, similarly produce oxidized iron and manganese compounds, such as iron hydroxides and manganese oxides that can directly oxidize steel. And the oxidation of the steel by oxidized iron and manganese compounds can reduce those iron and manganese atoms back to their reduced forms, so iron two and manganese two, making this process cyclic. And so it continues to reproduce those original products that then the bacteria ate and oxidized into oxidized forms. And then those oxidize the steel. And because anything redox reaction, when something is becoming oxidized, something also has to becoming reduced. And in this case, the oxidized manganese and iron compounds are the ones that are doing the oxidizing. Therefore, they're becoming reduced again. And that's 
recreating those original food compounds for the bacteria, if you will. So this is a cyclic process fed by the redox reaction involved in corrosion and then the bacteria, obviously. And if any soluble chlorine anions are present, heavy metal chlorides could form by the products that these bacteria are producing. And because heavy metal chlorides are extremely corrosive, that will just continue to contribute to the corrosion. Moving on now to chemoheterotrophs. This is the second group of bacteria we'll talk about. And now you can tell that even without knowing what that chemoheterotroph name means, you can tell that we're talking about reducing bacteria now rather than oxidizing. So we were just talking about sulfur, nitrogen, iron, and manganese oxidizing bacteria for the chemolithoautotrophs. But now for the chemoheterotrophs, we're seeing that we're talking about reducing bacteria rather than oxidizing. And the first one on the list is sulfate reducing bacteria. I've talked about these guys a lot on my channel, and I'm just actually realizing that I put sulfite, I, I put an I in there. There's not supposed to be an extra I before that A in sulfate. So I apologize for that misspelling, but these sulfate reducing bacteria are abbreviated SRB. So I'll refer to them as SRB. And these SRB can cause corrosion either indirectly or directly. The indirect pathway in which SRB cause corrosion is in the production of iron sulfide. So these guys reduce sulfate and produce sulfide. Remember from the previous videos that sulfate contains the oxidized form of sulfur and sulfide contains reduced sulfur. So they take this oxidized sulfate and they reduce the sulfur in it to make sulfide. And that's their byproduct. And because their byproduct is sulfide, the formation of iron sulfides as a indirect byproduct from their metabolism at the metal surface of the steel or whatever they're corroding causes corrosion of that material. The more direct way in which SRB can cause corrosion is in their hydrogenase activity. Hydrogenase is an enzyme that SRB, as well as many other chemoheterotrophs contain, and this enzyme catalyzes the reaction in which they accept hydrogen 2, that hydrogen 2 product we were talking about earlier that might create a protective film around the metal that's being corroded, and it releases protons from this process. So not only does it eat away at any protective layer of hydrogen 2 that might form around the metal surface, but it also produces protons that then can act as electron acceptors for the reduced metal and oxidize the metal directly because we talked about how protons in anaerobic environments are the main oxidant present in those environments and therefore cause corrosion that way. But sulfate reducing bacteria are not the only chemoheterotrophs that do contribute to corrosion both indirectly and directly. Also, nitrate reducers, methanogens, as well as iron-3 reducing bacteria also contribute both indirectly and directly in very similar ways to sulfate reducing bacteria to the corrosion of steel and other metals. And many of these bacteria also contain hydrogenase enzymes. And something really cool about hydrogenase enzymes, guys, is that these enzymes remain active long after the cell's dead. And so the cell doesn't even have to be alive to continue corroding the metal, which is absolutely insane. And also a little worrisome when we want to prevent corrosion, we're like, oh, we'll just kill the bugs that are doing it. Well, not necessarily. The last group of microorganisms that contribute heavily to corrosion are fungi. We talked about fungi in both of the previous videos, having discussed the fact that they produce organic acids, they have hyphae that can physically penetrate and weather and fracture rocks, creating fractures and pore spaces in which they can then inject more organic acid to continue dissolving the rock and corrode it. And because they are so effective at weathering materials, they can corrode steel, aluminum, and cement. And they also, as we discussed in the previous video, can tolerate a heck of a lot of conditions. So all of these micros and fungi that we've discussed in this video so far today are very tolerant and resilient in a lot of conditions and can heavily contribute to corrosion. And I mean, it's not a great thing to have things corrode, building materials, industrial materials, steel, cement, all of these things we need not to corrode and to kind of preserve itself. It's not a great thing, but you got to admit, these little guys are so impressive. I mean, we got to give them credit. 
we got it. So that's why I made this video. We're giving them credit. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Obviously you can see here the upcoming videos we have in the geobiology playlist include microbial zonation, which I've talked about for a few weeks and prebiotic deep branching life, which I took a poll on YouTube and I know you guys are really excited for that one as am I. And sorry, I don't have thumbnails for them yet. So you can see how far out I am uh, with creating these, but hopefully I'll get them out as soon as I can for you guys to check out and enjoy as well and if you've enjoyed this video and want to check out my major reference it was the introduction to geomicrobiology by kurt Kahnhauser. this book is linked in my description if you want to check it out as well as other contributing references that are always always linked in my description down below you can check them out as well as image sources anything else you want to check out down there and with that guys please comment down below whatever upcoming topics you'd like me to add to my list of upcoming topics that i already have or um, topics you'd like me to go over in other playlists that are on my channel or topics that are on my channel as well. That would be great if you would put those suggestions down below. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.